Alrighty then, successful indie author, 5-Minute Focus, episode 760, Making Mistakes. There's Stanley. Oh, yes, there he is. Oh. Yep. Okay. Making mistakes. So what kind of mistakes can you make? Almost all of them. However, there's some mistakes that you really, really have to avoid. First one is pay your taxes. You don't pay your taxes, the tax man's going to make your life hell. So first and foremost, you've got to make sure you pay your taxes. You can do all of the other stuff with a business setting it up. Take care of that, but pay your damn taxes. And the second one that's uh, really tough to recover from is alienating your readership. This is where you go after the readers. Oh, you suck. As opposed to uh, uh, thinking that you might have put your book in the wrong people's hands. Or that uh, it's uh, there might be a problem with the book. So some, uh, pushing blame off on somebody else when it really is your responsibility, especially as an indie, we're responsible for it all. So if we screw up distribution, if we trust somebody else to do that for us or we trust somebody else to advertise for us and it doesn't happen, it's our fault because we trusted the wrong person. And it's okay. You can make those kinds of mistakes, but you cannot alienate your readership because what if they are the right readers? and there was a problem with your book, telling them it was their fault, they'll never forgive you for that. They're not coming back to any of your titles. So those are the two ones. So I think you need to make mistakes. Because people ask me, what were the mistakes you made that you wish you hadn't? None. I, I'm glad I made the mistakes I, I made, and I'm glad I learned from them. The big thing is don't make a mistake twice. Don't make the same mistake twice or three times or four times. When you write your book... There's going to be mistakes in there, and I'm not talking typos. I'm going to talk in continuity issues and stuff like that. Fix them. Learn to do better. Learn to track better so you can do better, and then keep going. To reduce those number of, uh, of craft mistakes, it takes practice. You're not going to get your craft right on the very first novel. Some people do, okay, but they have a lot of help. It's not just they magically pulled out this book, and it's perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. The readers do their best, uh, and the readers will then determine if it's good enough. Good enough. That's all you're looking for. Good enough to keep them entertained and want to buy the next one. So they're investing their money and their time saying, this book is good enough. So that's kind of a high standard of good enough. It's not like, well, this book is horrible, but I'm going to give the author another chance. Let's not go for horrible. You want to do better than that, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Procedural. These are common. But fix a little, like procedural. Did you order your cover in time? You can't be sitting on your book saying, I don't have a cover for it, even though it comes out tomorrow. Uh, you need a cover. Get your cover. Get your stuff like that in order. Make sure that you've got your, your bank accounts confirmed with Amazon, with, confirmed with your other distributors, so when you get paid, you get paid, and not they start putting your money into a, a kitty and a pool waiting for you to give them their, their information so you can get your money. Those kinds of things, those are all fixable. Everything's fixable. Don't alienate your readership and pay your taxes. Those two, you, you do those two things, you're going to be pretty good. Now, the mistakes people make are based off fear and self-sabotage, and those are the ones they don't uh, recover from because they were afraid, because they're not willing to take that risk of publishing and putting their book in front of people. That's a mistake. You publish because then you need to learn what kind of mistakes are you making that you can learn from in order to do better. Nobody's perfect at the outset. Mistakes are trivial unless you keep making them. So stop alienating your audience. Don't write. If you try a book in first person, it doesn't resonate. The second, third, fourth books, they're not going to resonate either. Especially if third person past is what that genre is all about. <clears throat> sometimes it's not a mistake, sometimes it's bold, but until you know exactly what resonates, you can't know how to deviate from it in a way that is successful, in a way that the readers will embrace. Like Andy Ware, Project Hail Mary, it was written in first person present. I, I started reading that, I'm like, what is this? Because I'm used to third person past, it's science fiction, but it was gripping, and then it had uh, uh, flashbacks. Not a fan of flashbacks. However, it was a well-told story, 
And the reason I don't like flashbacks is because they aren't used properly. They aren't used in a way that helps move the story forward in other books. In this one, worked great. Excellent book. Five stars. We'll read the next one because he's a great storyteller. All right. There it is. But you got to know the rules. you got to know what resonates with the readership before you can deviate, and you're deviating from the right. So there we are. Let's see. Oh, five and a half minutes. Time to go. Peace, fellow humans.